Welcome to Let's Go Comic Show, episode number seven. My name is Justin, and Matt is gone. But no fear, when you're all alone, all you need to do is shine the rad signal in the air and call on a rad friend. We got rad friends. Rad friends, rad friends. Welcome to the show, Ryan Haas from Batman on Film. Hey! And Robin. I'm clapping for myself. He's clapping for himself. And Robin. <laughs> Everybody loves the Drake podcast. How you doing, Ryan? I am doing uh, good, actually. <laughs> wow. Well, welcome. You are the third in a long line of prestigious guests on the Let's Go Comic Show. Ooh. Yeah. So we're, we're happy to have you here. Nice. Happy to have you step in to not just filling in. You're a guest star. So. Ooh. Anytime you say, oh, you're Special filling guest. In. Filling in kind of sounds bad. It's like fill in. Like, who wants to be a fill in? I want to be a guest star, a featured player. Special. Right? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> with that being said, I literally text Ryan about 10 minutes ago and said, hey, <laughs> can you get on a show? And he was willing and able. So, you know, today's show is going to be a little loosey goosey. It's not going to be as organized, or <laughs> it's, it's going to be even less organized. <laughs> than other shows because if 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 you know me and you know matt matt's the organized one and i'm just like like i drank like seven cans of mountain dew and i'm just ready to go so we're just gonna (laughs) jump into it uh glad that you're here first off let's just start you off with the rating system so ryan you're a little aware of the let's go universe yes 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 i am so if we absolutely cannot get behind something it's a don't go AKA trash juice. We're not going to say do it. <laughs> We're going to tell you if you're into that, you probably should change your life and avoid those types of things. Go is, hey, you know what? Go do it. We're not going to say not to, but you know, everyone's got their own opinions, right? Let's go is the namesake. So we're going to get behind that and say, dude, let's go. I think you should do it. And then gotta go is maybe leave your significant other and go do that because it's that good, right? And it's all tongue in cheek. So we never want mm, we never yes. want you to leave your significant other, but maybe yeah, yes. maybe just get in the car and start it and say, hey, you know, we we got to go do this right now. So <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, so I was actually scrubbing through some of the news we had, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let a little of it you know stay over to when Matt comes on. But uh, hey, did you even did you see today that Joe Manganiello now is saying I don't know if I'm gonna be in the Batman? Yeah, I did I did see that? Uh, what was it? What was the video clip from? It was an interview. Yeah, video it was an interview, interview for the Smurfs because he's in the Smurfs movie. And right, so right, right, right. He's basically saying he's unsure if he's gonna be in uh this Batman <laughs> it a, thing. It was a question. Yeah, it was one of their questions, and they said something like, um, so so the next thing you're doing would be death. In the Batman movie, and then he gives this funny look, like, "Well, uh, yeah, well, pro- we'll see." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> almost uh. like, almost like uh, th- things could change. Yeah, which is something we've been here for a while. Yeah, which is disappointing because I like him. It'd be great if he could be in, you know, either he's in the Batman or whatever it's called, or you know, some type of uh, DCEU film. That would be great because. Mm-hmm. You know what would suck is if like Marvel said, "Hey, and not a slight on Marvel because I like Marvel movies as well." But Marvel's like, "Okay, we'll take them. We'll put them. We'll make them somebody." You know, I'm hoping he's holding yeah. out like he holds out, and either there's a place for Deathstroke somewhere else. Like I had an idea and I put it out mm-hmm. there like a, a few weeks back. Like, well, maybe they can put him into Nightwing. He seems like a well, yeah. I mean, he's we we already said that he's he's is more of a Titans Nightwing type yeah. of villain anyway. So I only was, in the past you know five or six years has he been skewing more towards Batman himself, yeah. really. Yeah, like more of a, I would say he's more of a, like a Justice League nemesis, kind of like he go, he takes on the bigger deals. It's like whoever's, whoever pays him, you know, but yeah, I I think he has a better history with Nightwing and it would be interesting to see them, like maybe it ties into Titan stuff. I don't know. I don't know what their plans are. It's kind of like speculating, guestulating, whatever, but I think, (laughs) I think he, I think he fits in better with, with Nightwing, but I'm not going to say it wouldn't be cool to see him go up against Batman, so Whatever happens, mm-hmm. happens, you know. So interesting yeah. to hear, though. Huh? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> interesting is a word to yeah. describe <laughs> describe what's happening. It's just we we're as fans, I think we're a little bit more on the front lines of of a, the development of this Batman movie than we ever really have been in the other previous ones, just yeah. because of the internet age we live in, plus how you know the DCE has been such a you know roaster. So all the eyes are on this specific project. So everybody wants to know exactly what's happening with it at all times. And so it's so 
unavoidable at this point, especially because of the way all parties have handled it, you know, and, you know, uh, fans and Warner brothers alike. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we just kind of need to ride it out. Um, Hey, speaking of Marvel, did you hear about Michael Rosenbaum? No. You, you, know you mean this? Smallville's um, Lex Luthor? Michael Rosenbaum? Smallville's, <laughs> Smallville's Lex Luthor slash uh, Justice League animated flash yeah. Michael Rosenbaum. Slash the great uh, Christopher Walken in Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. Miles slash, <laughs> slash Zoe Duncan Jack and Jane TV show. Sorry. Slash. He was also in it. He was also in a sweet episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia too. Oh, there you anyway, go. Anyway, that guy. Yeah, that guy's awesome. Uh, James Gunn. I did an interview or tweeted something and revealed that Michael Rosenbaum was going to be a sig- in Guardians of the Galaxy two in a significant role. Oh wow! Um, yes, and nice. he's uh, James Gunn says something along the lines of, you know, why taking advantage of the perks of being a director at Marvel, he wanted to hire uh, one of his friends and put him in a movie. So. Um, we don't know who he's going to be, um, and people are instantly jumping to the whole, like, oh my god, he's Adam Warlock, or he's somebody really important, <laughs> um, which, you know, who knows, he's he might not. end up being, uh, yeah. scoop, you know, Scoop Me Area is the Flash and Batman versus Superman, he ended oh, up man. being, like, some guy with, you know, no hair. legs. Um, but Michael Rosenbaum's awesome, and yeah. super underrated, and um, I think he'd be really cool as anybody in that universe, so I'm pretty excited about yeah, what what was it? What being the in the first Guardians, it was Nathan Fillion who was who was in it. They're like, oh, he's gonna have a crazy <laughs> role, and he just had that like motion capture like alien <laughs> scene. So like yeah. sometimes it's like, hey, I'll just do something fun. Everyone has to think way too much about things. So yeah, you love fans. I love fans, and they're they're over speculation, and then they get disappointed. <laughs> It's like, yeah. well, what's your problem, guys? All right. So moving on, moving on from uh, Joe Manganiello and whatever he's doing. Hopefully uh, he's included, but whatever. We'll find out, right? We'll find out when we need to know. It's like, okay, imagine if Batman 89 was coming out right now. People, we would have already have said Bill Murray's Batman, Alec Baldwin's Batman, Eddie Murphy's Robin. They changed director. I mean, all that stuff would have been already scrutinized. And I think we just know, like you just said, we know way too much and mm-hmm. it really ruins stuff almost. But there's just no way to control that oh, anymore. Yeah. You have to film yeah. it in a bunker underground and we'll yeah. never know. So, okay, uh, speaking about something that's coming out soon, interesting enough, there hasn't been any news on this movie, Thor Ragnarok. What, what's your what's your excitement mm-hmm. for Thor Ragnarok, Ryan? Uh, we, my excitement for Thor Ragnarok has been pretty high. Yeah. Um, we don't get to talk much about th- that because we just do Batman. No, we... Yeah, Batman we don't talk so Marvel don't too much. Marvel. You know, you want to know, uh, we little peek behind the curtain. We we talked about doing a a Marvel show like on BOF, mm-hmm. just ranking all the films and everything. And I've I've had my film rankings for every Marvel movie <laughs> ready to ready to go. Whenever I got mine too. We, <laughs> whenever we do or don't have that ready, that's what we should do. Whenever there's a BOF off week, we should just record a Marvel show. Yeah, we'll just, just do a Marvel me. show. We'll and just do it and say, hey, Bill. Just do a Marvel show and then have it BOF with, without without Bill. And it'd be, people would hate it so much. Yeah, they would. But <laughs> oh, man. We can, I've got do, it here. We can so, do it here. We'll, we can do the Marvel show here. Yeah, we Whatever. We'll, we'll yeah, see. You. And, yeah. and then Matt will have his because Matt – Matt is really like opinionated and it's really fun to talk to, to Matt about these types of things. So I would love yeah. to have Matt on as well because his conjecture yeah. well, is with good. The, with the Marvel movie, because I, I'm not as – I'm just a, more of a casual Marvel fan. I, I just watch the movies and I'm like, this was good or this wasn't good or mm-hmm. this didn't do anything for me. So I've got this kind of – I can step back from them and, you know – uh, rank them appropriately, but uh, in terms of Thor Ragnarok, I'm I'm super excited because I I like Thor um, quite a bit, and yeah. his the his first movie that uh, Kenneth Branagh directed I thought was was strong. Uh, the second one not not so much, yeah. but it's not as bad as everybody parts, yeah. as it is. I mean, I think it it it's a it's a go for me. I mean, if I want to rate it, it I think there's some fun parts. Um, a lot of people, it's funny how people are saying, oh, this new one's going to have a lot more humor in it. And I felt like the second one actually had a lot of humor <laughs> in it with, you know, Yeah, Kat, they called the Kat hammer Denny's. meow meow. Yeah, meow meow. <laughs> Which, that's, that, I think that's fun. Like, there was some good stuff with it. And there was still, like, you know, the uh, the heaviness of it with the either and stuff like that. But it just didn't feel as 
big as it needed to be. It felt more yes. like an episode of the Thor TV show, <laughs> if there was yes, a Thor did. TV no, show. No, it did. Yeah. It absolutely did. I mean, it, it was small in scope. It, 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 after seeing Thor 1, it, a lot of it took place in, you know, the, quote, real world. Yeah. And for Thor Dark World, Thor 2, I think uh, everybody was thinking, oh, okay, well, they can forget all that stuff and just go into realms and space, do whatever. Um and we kind of got that, but not not as to the level I think that we all wanted. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Thor Ragnarok, I think, sounds really interesting, and oh, yeah. ha- having um, Hulk be a part of it is super interesting. You know, oh, yeah. because you know, there's all these weird loopholes, and why we don't have a solo, another, why we have not had a, another Hulk movie. Um, so having him in Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok, is just super smart. Um, and I can't wait to see how that works. And their, you know, relationship was one of the best, most fun parts of like the Avengers. Mm-hmm. So I just, I'd like to see that explore a little bit more. Yeah, dude. My... You've got some. Well, what was ahead. that? No, go ahead. Oh, you're the. I guest. was going to say, uh, and there's, and, the, okay. <laughs> and there's like, uh, you know, some of the actors they've got in this in the movie. You know, is is isn't Jeff Goldblum in this thing? Je- oh man, the Jurassic Park's sure. own. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. They got Carl Urban, <laughs> exactly. Kate Blanchett, Anthony Hopkins, and Kate Bl- Blanchett. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and seeing her like play a villain like that in a superhero movie is kind of in it's something I thought I really wouldn't see her do out, you know, outside of you know her appearances yeah. in something like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and she, um, you know what? And she doesn't look like when I first saw that cover of Entertainment Weekly uh, a couple weeks back. I was, I was like, honestly, I, didn't know who I, that was, was. I was like. I was like, who's that? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, okay, so did you get she's the... Act, she's a very transformative actress, too. You yeah. know, so so I think she'll take it super yeah. seriously. And I think and I think she brings, like, again, some of that, like, gravitas at the... I would say both Marvel yeah. and DC have, have got great actors that are involved yeah. with their stuff, which, which is really cool, like, the type of talent that these, mm-hmm. like, universes are bringing. But one of the things she said, and I don't know if you saw it last week, but she had made oh, a comment... Oh, this is dumb. Yeah. But, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Kate, but I, I, this comment is a little strange. Yeah, but, she's like, it's 2017, and we finally have a female villain. And I'm like, what? So that was just what? a quote. But I went and actually read the read the whole thing, and she was – Seemed sp- more like Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, but even so, that, that kind of discounts a lot of the other female villains that, you know, Marvel has – may have may have had on their in their movies and stuff so i kind of made it like oh you know what about guardians of the galaxy we had um oh gosh i just lost her name uh nebula Nebula. yeah we had nebula and not that nebula had this huge presence but um yeah it just a it just shows that man this this lady has not researched much (laughs) she just did she just show Uh, up or is she just thinking is she talking about like a major role you know so i i i i i I took it as major main villain in a marvel movie that's the only way it made sense to me like, because otherwise yeah, you're Catwoman like, well, and Dark Knight Rises. Catwoman, like, exactly. We her, we, Catwoman we, we, and Batman Returns. Yeah. Yeah. We, Talia. We, I mean, we've had... Boys and Ivy. Well, yeah, we've had female <laughs> villains, like, I would say, since 1966. <laughs> yes. even, be, even before that, right? I mean, anyway, it, was, it just... That was an interesting thing, but the internet kind of blew up with it, and it was really funny seeing oh, yeah. everyone's responses. It was just like, well, what about this? What about this? And... I'm sure she pay, she pays no mind. She's like whatever, you know. Somebody's vacuuming yeah. my hair right now, and that's probably exactly how she says it too. You know, like I pay no mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly. She's like, I won't let them buggers bother me with their internet trolling. So <laughs> there you go. You know, to troll just a little bit. I yeah. did. I I did think that the costume on that we saw uh, Hella, her character in mm-hmm. on that was it Entertainment Weekly. Yeah. Um, I did think it was a little. You know, at first glance, a little maybe too similar to the Elizabeth Banks Rita Repulsa in the wow. Power Rangers. I was t- I was just gonna say that. <laughs> that is exactly, wow, it's I mean, crazy. I was just gonna wavelength. say that. I was. I'm, <laughs> we're on the same wavelength. You know, yeah. women villains in green like armor. She almost know. looks better. She almost looks like a better Rita Repulsa to me than uh, Elizabeth Banks. Uh, yeah. But I, yeah, I mean that's a whole other thing. Yeah, I can care less. <laughs> okay, what's your, what's your excitement for? Because I want to go back to Thor a little bit, but what's your excitement <laughs> for the Power Rangers movie? Uh, I got to tell you, I when the original Power Rangers came out, I was like the perfect age to get into it. Yeah, and I even remember going to school. It was like I went to summer school, like summer camp, summer school that year. One of those for the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers when that was out, and I like had my mom like I colored the coloring book page of like. 
Jason from the Power Rangers, and he had, had like his like suit logo. So I like cut out the coloring book page, and I had like my mom sew sew that piece of paper to like a red <laughs> shirt, so I could like wear it around and pretend I was like a Power Ranger. So nice. I was into Power Rangers the, uh, for that first season or so, and, and that and throughout probably the the height of it was that first movie that came out for me. Um, but that's 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 my extent of Power Rangers fandom ever since then. But I say I I'm pretty curious uh, about the reboot, and I I think I will go see it in the theater just because I want to see what they do. And wow. okay. I am a, a fan. You know, you know, I have got things crazy things like my Super Mario Brothers movie website and stuff <laughs> like that. So I, so I'm I'm a big fan of which I like that I like that movie by the way. Yeah. I yeah. thought Super Mario Brothers well, was a great like interpretation of that, like that story. So, yeah. And that's, and that's why I'm interested in seeing it. T- any, any time that a uh, book or movie or game or something in one form of media gets translated into another or reinterpreted, you know, interpretations of things that always, and is that I'm always interested in that by that anyway. And then if it's pop culture related, I'm even more interested. Yeah. So for that reason, I, I'm pretty uh, curious about power Rangers. The only thing that, I mean, well, there's lots of things in that trailer, but one thing that I th- I thought in one of the most recent trailers is strange is Brian Cranston is is playing Zordon, and when he talks, his voice is just like normal Brian Cranston voice, and not like Zordon in a computer. He, you know, the old Zordon was like Power Rangers, you know. <laughs> but in this trailer, it's more just like I'm Brian Cranston. You're the Power Rangers. You know, so it's just kind of weird. He's like, but I'm whatever. making meth in this secret cave. Get out, <laughs> <laughs> the Blue Ranger. You will be. You will do my bidding. <laughs> the Blue Ranger is powered by meth. So, just kidding. He's not. He's not kids. So, um, yeah, it was funny. I was watching the Kids Choice Awards last week, and the cast of the Power Rangers movie came out. And mm. it felt like the crowd was dead. It's like <laughs> nothing. Like no one cared. It was like, just like, "Hey guys, we're here." Who are these? Yeah. Uh, Who are these people? And yeah. it was really weird. They just kind of walked out behind giant helmets. The helmets looked really cool on stage, like these giant Power mm-hmm. Ranger helmets. And they walked out, and it was like no energy, like just. Oh. But that whole show, I think, it was exhausting. To be honest, it was like we are marketing the heck out of everything tonight. So like, you don't know what yeah. you don't know where your focus is. It's like uh. Like you only remember the last thing that you ever saw, you know, and so yeah. Anywho, um, all right. So yeah, Power Rangers. That's that's it's interesting. I, I'm curious how that's going to end, and whenever that comes out, comes out in May, does it? I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll Sometime. see. Pay attention to to <laughs> Ryan's Twitter. He'll he'll let you know. <laughs> so back to back <laughs> sure. to Thor. I was really I was really excited by it. a. I thought the Entertainment Weekly cover was really cool. Just the kind of the, actually the visual they put on it. What? Sorry to interrupt. No, it's March twenty fourth. So oh, it's March twenty fourth. Oh. <laughs> so, so it's Friday. Next, it's like next week. <laughs> yeah. Next week. It's morphin time. Go, go, go to the theater. Or don't. Just download the show and, and hear what we have to say. So uh what do you think about Thor's new look? His back to Thor. <laughs> what do you think about it's Thor's new look? Like the the no hair and the the new armor and he just you know, meow, meow. It's, it's weird with Meow Meow. Yeah. He doesn't have Meow Meow though. Does he? You know, not on this not on this cover. He's got swords. Like Yeah, I think that's I think that's probably a part of the story or something. He kinda yeah. looks like a, a lumberjack guy or something. <laughs> Just kinda doesn't you know uh, I'm sure there was looking. some grooming situation like he's in battle mode now. This looks like he's Yeah, well yeah. yeah. When you say Thor Ragnarok and and the, I read about the story in comic books it's based off of, you know, like if he has to go to some planet and do gladiator type stuff, I'm sure gonna be like oh let's cut his hair off and get him battle ready and you know it makes sense yeah so it doesn't bother me too much yeah i don't care you know? i i am not yeah, I, I don't have any <laughs> uh any grievances i'm i'm really excited but again there's not even yeah. a trailer they haven't put a trailer out watch there'll be a trailer like as soon as we put the show out <laughs> which good omen well, I, I mean know. there's again, no trailer no nothing when's it come out november comes out in november uh yeah, so like there's another movie that comes out in November that we're excited about, and there's no trailer for that either. Yeah, oh, so. I, I heard. I actually just read that there should be something. If, okay, let's just transition. Eh, Thor, we're good. Any any other things to talk about? Thor, no, we good. I'm excited. We're excited. Yeah, it. I'm I'm super excited. I can't wait to see footage for this movie. Um, is I heard that there's supposed to be some footage at WonderCon, which is in about two weeks, uh, with mm-hmm. Justice League. And mm-hmm. so that makes sense. 
Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to WonderCon. Oh. So oh, are, are you? Yeah, I, I am. As of as of right now, I'm going. <laughs> if something else happens, <laughs> I'll let you know. But um, I'm pretty excited to to see something because there's there's been no no real um, you know footage besides the Comic Con footage. Like I'm excited to see something new. So, well, here's what. I, so, if they show anything at WonderCon, I just, I hope it's a trailer. It's a trailer or nothing, please, because. Like I've said on BOF on our podcast, I just feel like they, the next time they show anything significant from Justice League, it has to make a splash. It has to make a big difference. Yeah, it's just like here's more Aquaman test footage. It's yeah. just going to be not cutting it at yeah. that point, in Maybe, my opinion. Yeah. Well, it says it says that they have so Warner Brothers will have a panel at WonderCon. And says, get a sneak peek at upcoming films from Warner Brothers, New Line, and DC Entertainment Films with special guests to mm-hmm. be announced. So. You know, mm. that's going to be, that's going to be a, that actually might sell this thing out, to be honest. Like, oh, right yeah. now you can still get passes. It's, 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 they're under the same company that does San Diego Comic Con. And right. it used to be up in Northern California and they moved it to Anaheim. So it's like right across the street from Disneyland. And it's actually been a yeah. pretty cool con to go to, but this might sell it out. So I'm just kind of waiting on my press pass and it's, they're not going to let me know until like the week of, and I don't want to get <laughs> sold out on, I'm going to be, I actually sent them an email. I was like, Hey, let, let me know what's you going get on. Sold on. Oh yeah. So if you don't get a press pass, you, you won't be able to go. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, wait. but they're like, yeah, let us, we'll let you know in four weeks. I'm like, well, that's when the show is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like really a, it's a real like tight, like, you know, line, let us know. So anywho, Maybe maybe it's just going to be one room footage. Who knows? But I'm excited for uh, I'm excited for Justice League. I know a lot of people aren't. I just I still have a glimmer of hope and excitement for this movie to to be something fun for everybody. So I'm excited. So what did you think about the Wonder Woman trailer? I know we talked about it a little bit on Bof oh. last week. Um, so you want to? Is there any I, other thoughts you may have had that we weren't able to share there? Or no, I mean I. I think they're doing a, a great job with the Wonder Woman marketing so far, yeah. and, and I'm I'm glad that they didn't reveal too much more. They yeah. they didn't reveal like some crazy villain or show what Ares looks like or yeah. anything like that. And, and they're just and I'm glad that they're focusing on um, Diana herself. You know, yeah. Wonder Woman as a character. I think just that's the, that's the, what they need to be doing really. Mm-hmm. And I and I've heard you know, and we even talked about this on on Bof. You know, like well. Now I've seen this trailer. I've seen all the origin, but then again, hardly. It's it's the same. Yeah, what did you say? Hardly. I, yeah, I said hardly. I mean, I mean, we. It's non-comic fans it's, really have no idea. Like they may like. Well, yeah, where's Wonder Woman come from? You, this, you don't know. Yeah, and it's the same. It's the same argument from from Batman Begins. You know, it's just like yeah, we 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 know bit the bits and pieces of Wonder Woman, but. They, but it is an origin movie, and you're gonna you expect some of this stuff to be in there anyway, and yeah. all it's gonna be is how they do it, and and the choices they make, and and seeing it uh, all come together, I think is is part of it. So, you know, I I think it's I think it's fine, and and a lot of these trailers, of course, you gotta also remember that they're not made for fans. Yeah, <laughs> they're made that they, so there are trailers. They are made for, you know the public at large to get in excited about, about the movie. So, yeah. um, and, if and there's, people it, don't know her origin. I mean, I, yeah. let me just tell you, and it's, like, shift, I, and it's changed. It's, it's changed. changed. That's what I'm saying. Like there's years. three different versions like you can throw out there yeah. and they're probably putting them all together in one little, like wonder woman, like roast. Yeah. And they're, cooking it up and that's how we're going to get it. And so, wonder woman stew. yeah, wonder, yeah. Wonder <laughs> woman stew, you know? So let's, let's, I'm excited about it. I'm excited yeah. about wonder woman. Can't wait to see that movie. Um, it's, it's funny how, um, not funny, but like they did a great job marketing that movie to like the kids, man. Like I thought that was good. That was a smart move on Warner brothers. Talking doing about it. the, uh, yeah, the kids the choice, choice awards. Kids choice awards. Yeah. yeah. That yeah was I thought cool. that was super smart. Some yeah. people were complaining about it as they always do. But if you go and watch that clip, it was, it was, it was really kind of, uh, touching it was yeah. it was pretty great yeah it was Smart. good so, so i'm excited for that um you, yeah. you said something you, you kind of you brought up batman begins and i thought what was cool about batman begins is it went into the stuff no one ever they never even run into some of that mm-hmm. stuff in the comics they did a little bit there was a legends of the dark knight the kickoff story to that comic way back when it was called shaman i believe oh yeah i may be um, off yeah, i may be off a series but the, they kind of yeah no, it is is that is that what it is yeah they kicked off and they kind of did a little bit of like 
the beginnings of Bruce Wayne, but they never went into the him traveling the world and all the training. Like that's never really been addressed yeah. until that film. So that's kind yeah. of a and it, it, modern thing. Yeah, and you've got the 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 man who falls uh, short story. Oh, from the, that like was the in 70s? a. Was well, I think I think it was 70s? in the eighties. It's I actually just bought the graphic novel that that's in a, a couple weeks ago. It's actually this old uh, Secret Origins graphic novel uh, paperback. Oh, with the that's Brian Mullen art. Where it's got <laughs> yes, it's in that. That's okay. it, which is why people really haven't heard of it because it's kind of in this other random thing. And then they included it in uh, the Batman Begins DVD. <laughs> but other than that, I don't think it's been reprinted that that much. But hmm. uh, that was used as a basis too. Nice. All right, so let's let's jump out of let's jump out of these movies because we always get I feel like we, every week we get bogged down with movie news and not oh. that it's not important it's probably the most like you know prevalent thing with you know pop culture yeah. and comics right now but is there any uh, books that you're reading right now Ryan what, what's what's on Ryan I, Haas's shelf Oh my shelf so I've got like I've been showing you I've got like a I'm lifting it up uh, I've got this big stack of comics. I've got like three weeks worth of comic that I need to read. Wow. Um, but uh, I'm I'm reading tons of titles. And if you want, I, I can just kind of go through my stack and tell yeah, you tell what us, tell I Yeah, tell us what your stack is because it's, kind of, it's interesting what people are reading. Yeah. I'd love to hear Okay, it so I've, I've got uh, Batman, Tom King Batman, and uh, Superman. Yeah. Tomasi Superman. Uh, uh Disclaimer, uh, most of are going to be DC, so, you know, <laughs> just bear with me. Uh, I've got Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. I'm reading that. Is that any good? Because I, I actually dropped that. I'm enjoying it. Okay. I, uh, and it's been this weird flip-flop. Uh, I enjoyed um, Hal Jordan more at the at the beginning, and then Green Lantern's not as much. And now it's flip-flopped, and I like Green Lantern's quite a bit more. Um, but uh, I'm, en- I'm enjoying both Green Lantern titles, honestly, because they're just... I like that lore, and I like what they mm-hmm. do with those characters, and and it's been, it's been pretty interesting to me. And okay. and in the Green Lanterns, uh, book they've they've done a they did like a, a two issue arc. They go to Gotham with Batman, um, which is was pretty pretty neat little crossover. What was so so sorry? I'm totally gonna yeah. I saw that cover. No. I wanted to pick that. Up. I'm totally gonna like. Uh, I'm going to stop you right there just for a second. So Green Lantern, I love Green oh, Lantern. And once um, John's got off and who's the new writer? Cause he's been doing it ever since. Uh, and daddy. Yeah. And I just, he did his first storyline just didn't connect with me. And I forget the guy's name already. He, it was like, I remember it was during the forever evil or not forever evil, but it was like a, that he's 3d covers. And I was like, this is it. I, I'm oh just, yeah. I'm just not loving this story anymore. And because they did the they did the really cool Simon Bass story, and then after that, well, it just kind of went downhill for me. In the new fifty, in the new fifty two, yeah. So here, here's my little Green Lantern spiel. I mean, I read from Green Lantern Rebirth, and then I read everything, like every Green Lantern title, and then at some point when the new fifty two started, I, I still have like the last arc pre new fifty two, and then I have every, and then in my long, I got like every Green Lantern title. Uh, for the new like every issue of them, uh-huh. and I st- oh up until the point where John's finished, uh, and there was that Wrath of the First Lantern stuff. That's and, what it was. And he, I was, and he, and that's where he like stopped his or wrapped up his entire you know, however many year Green Lantern run. Uh, so I've got all those books, and I have yet to read them. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> got like a you know, I've got like years worth of Green Lantern that I really need to just buckle down one, you know one time and read mm-hmm. um but i'm excited about that and i i enjoyed that stuff and then it, and my drop it in the new 52 was because i felt like okay well that's ones and i am done with that now mm-hmm. so i can you know read other books but so i left that on the table but then when rebirth dc rebirth started i got their other green lantern titles yeah just to pick it back up and uh you know they haven't really spoiled anything too much from what happened before and i'm i'm enjoying reading them cool well that's good like I, I just love Green Lantern. I just felt like I haven't been connected to that character for almost like three years now. So mm, mm-hmm. even even I was trying to read Justice League and I dropped that. So okay, I didn't mean to I, yeah. I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut you back into your list. So you went to Green Lantern and then what, what else you, you got? No, this is a good this is a good way to go through it because I like I said, I, I was reading Justice League too and I, I dropped it too because it just it was it was too much and then this is what I'm worried about in the movie too. It was just too much about it wasn't able to give enough focus to all the characters and it was just kind of fell flat, you know, eventually. Mm-hmm. 
Then when they did that um, Justice League versus Suicide Squad crossover, I was just like, okay, I'm an out. <laughs> I can't do this. Uh, see, I was interested in that, um, and I didn't, I didn't pick it up because the, yeah. I just didn't care about the team, and I feel like that book yeah. should be 100% like amazing because I feel like Jeff Johns' new 52 oh, yeah. run was excellent. Like to the it was to the to the good. very end, it was good. That yeah, was one I, of the only books I stuck with all the way to the end of New Fifty Two. Even yeah. over Batman, I stuck with Justice League. Wow. Well, I I have got a, I've got some gaps in Justice League too that I haven't read um, in the New Fifty Two. But I did go back where Rebirth started because I wanted to get caught up with it, and I mm-hmm. read that entire final arc uh, in the New Fifty Two for Justice League, and it was excellent. It was so good. Yeah, it was a really good um, book. And that's the thing that John's d- does really well in the New Fifty Two. He's able to give you know that. DC Universe depth of with the story mm-hmm. depth with the weird storyline and the lore. He is also able to give you some nice character beats but during crazy things that happen, you know. Yeah. So he, I think he did a good job on that. Yeah. All right. So you dropped Justice League like me. What else you got? Yes, uh, I am reading Teen Titans. Okay. Which uh, is on issue five or six or something like that, and I'm I'm enjoying it a lot. But it's got um, it's got uh, Dame. And Google, and it's just a cool new team dynamic. You know, Damien's doing it for me, and yeah. I think that's I think that's going pretty well. I've got Batgirl with uh, that Hope Larson is writing. Mm. Uh, kind of, it's kind of middle of the road for me at the moment. I, I, it's it's one of those books I read it, and it's good, but I sometimes feel like it's really written for me, uh. <laughs> and uh, it's just you know I don't know if I and Batgirl is really. Um, a character where her interpretation changes a lot between, you know, every couple of years, you know, they'll, they'll change how she acts and what her shtick is and things like that. And, and I don't really know if this one really is really doing it for me. Um, but it's more pro- got, it's more to do with like what I want out of a, the Batgirl character than, than the book itself. It's, 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 it's okay. Gotcha. Um, Batman hey. beyond, uh, how do you, how do you I am that? really, I'm really enjoying Batman Beyond. Okay. And it just in general, um, just and it's in Terry general, Terry McGinnis is back. Cause I remember for some reason, Tim Drake became yes. Batman Beyond, which that's, my that's brain, basically that book in a nutshell. For some reason, <laughs> Tim Drake, is Batman and Batman Beyond. And it made no sense. And, uh, I did not read that at all. And I was, I thought that was terrible. <laughs> and you're, and you're a huge Tim Drake fan, but it was like, yeah, why so that, just, that just tells you how, how weird it was. Yeah. Yeah. Not not even that could get me invested in it because it was that's a whole bag of worms and yeah. it wasn't good. Um, I, our pal Rob from I, uh, Everyone Loves a Drake he he read all that stuff and I'm like, dude, I, yeah. more power to you. But that's good. But that also shows you just you know Batman Beyond in New Fifty Two versus Rebirth. It's it's Dan Jurgens. It's the same writer. Mm-hmm. So just to show you that a different. Um, continuity setup mm-hmm. can make all the difference for a, a comic book writer. Yeah. Um, Cause sometimes that's like this, an editorial edict. Like here's what we want. Yeah. We want Tim. Yeah. Drake like right now, like right. <laughs> Batman's blasted back in home. And now, you know, it's like, <laughs> well, I have to work with this. Yeah. Um, but the Batman beyond and DC rebirth has been really good. And Terry's back and a lot of the old back, they're doing some interesting things. The Batman beyond. Um, so I don't have anything bad about that to say at all. Um, so it's doing good. Cool. I have a uh, IDW back to the future. Oh, cool. I, I've been reading that it's on like issue 17, 18, something like that. Um, and they've got a few series out now. They've got back to the future main title. It, uh, they've got like Biff to the future, which <laughs> show Wait, I'm also reading with Biff what, to the what, future. What, yeah, it's called. It's like a little mini series. It's called Biff to the future. It oh, actually man. fills in the gap and it tells you what, Biff did after he gets the almanac to the future too, and leads up all the way to uh, you know. Are you kidding evil me? Who's Donald is Bob Gill writing that? Bob is like story, like uh, he's the story guy for all these books. Oh wow! Like he's the story guy, and he has like writing partners that like flesh out the ideas. Nice kind of thing. I believe is how they're handling it. Okay. Um, now you so know he wrote, really you know Bob Gill wrote No Man's Land, right? I think the kickoff to that. He wrote a lot of some parts of it, yeah. 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 Sorry, little little connecting yeah. it to Batman there, no, but great. Wow, well, okay, that's I mean, cool. It, I didn't know that. Hey, I didn't know they were. I've seen Back to the Future comics, but I haven't yeah. picked them up. But that's no, cool. they're good. I mean, if you're a Back to the, I mean, I'm a huge Back to the Future junkie, okay. and 
and uh, it's 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 doing a great job. I mean, the the main the main title is like I said, it's on like issue seventeen or something like that, and it was initially meant to be a miniseries uh-huh. that fills in little gaps of story. That's all in continuity um, with the movies, um, but it did so well that they kept going, and now they're doing a little bit larger story arcs, and they're just they're just really fantastic. Are they it's, collected uh, editions at all of it? There's at least one. Oh, cool. That's cool. There's at least one collected edition. I know that. I might it's like the first, like I said, it's like the first six issues or something. Yeah, you, if you get that and read it and like it, and then you can keep going with it because it's it's good and it does uh, a niche that's not superheroes, uh, and it's it's just really well done. Um, Wonder Woman, I am reading. Nice, and that's been good. Uh, I've heard that's good. I just haven't been able to pick it up. It's been good. It's been good, but it keeps slipping kind of towards the bottom of my pile just because it's like. I don't know what what it is about it. It's just kind of like not again. It's maybe like the whole Batgirl thing. Like Greg, I like Wonder Woman. I like Greg, Greg Rucka a lot, but it's just not really the <laughs> the book I want to read. Really, uh-huh. um, but it's it's good. And they've been doing interesting things because uh, out of all the books, uh, the Rebirth books that are twice a month, mm-hmm. they are doing two storylines. You yeah. know, so at the beginning of the month. Get one storyline. A couple weeks later, you'll get a different one. Which I think is a great um, idea. It's a great idea, and it keep and and that way they can get a uh, writer, oh, not one, one artist per story. Yeah. So the consistency is there. So I think it's super smart doing that. And um, one story is set in the past, and one story is set in the future. So there's a lot of stuff to like there. I really like the new Fifty Two Wonder Woman. I read a lot of that. I think I read all the way up into the thirties of that title. Oh wow! Yeah. I read. I read Five good. or six issues. Yeah, I th- yeah, I enjoyed it too. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a really good book. Um, you know, and then it kind of it kind of went, you know, the way of the buffalo. After a while, it was just kind of eh, it's done. Most, but, most of the new fifty two books did. <laughs> yeah, like there was probably four books that were like really good, and it just kind of they just didn't know what they were doing, in my opinion. But that's a yeah. whole other show. <laughs> All right, keep going. Yeah, what you got? Yeah. What you got, Ryan? You keep got going. Uh, detect- detective comics, which. Oh, we talked talk about Detective Comics a lot. It's it's yeah. my favorite book right. of Rebirth because it, as as far as just that scratch, it, it it scratches the itch of uh, Batman family, you know, goings on. Yeah, I just crave a, on a biweekly basis. Yeah. It's it's great. Um, I feel like I'm Tinian, supposed to buy that book. I just can't. I, don't I know. know, man. It's like that little. It's that little bat kid on the corner. You're like, I'm gonna get you, man, but. I just don't know. I just, it's so hard. I feel I'm forcing myself to read it. And, yeah. and I told you that it's Shit. just, there's my issue is with Tim Drake is he's not there. Yeah. And when he first was in it, he just felt like he wasn't there. And then they built him up for like two issues and you're like, Oh great. He's gone. And now I got to deal with, with Tim Drake not being there and knowing yeah. he's coming back. Well, but, you talk about editorial, you know, <laughs> meddling here. I believe that Tim Drake was going to be off the table regardless. And Tinian heard of that and was like, well, can I use him for the first arc? Of this so I can actually, you know, so we can have a proper send off, uh-huh. you know? So I think we can kind of, you know, thank Tinian for doing that. Otherwise, he would just probably Tim Drake would have had a super unceremonious death after being completely ruined in the new 52. Yeah. Um, oh, so at yeah. least they were kind of able to bring him back and make him is, good again. Is his origin still the same from new 52? That was the stupidest change. That was the stupidest origin in the right? world. I hate it so much. Like, like I, the I, whole like witness protection thing. And he yeah. was never, Oh, I hate terrible. It. I hate it, man. I hate it. Sad. I hate that. He was never Robin. I hate that. He's always just been red Robin and the consistency. Like, there was there was one part where his costume was the same as it was during one year later. You know, the, all the red, basically like oh, the, yeah. the red suit. Um, sorry, dude, just that really bugged me. The whole there was two things that they did with, and I don't know who wrote that origin for for Tim Drake, but I thought it was terrible. I hated it. And then I think a committee did. A com- <laughs> oh man, it, it felt it just felt so stupid, dude. And then uh, the and here's the thing: Scott Scott Snyder's Mister Freeze re reorigin. I didn't like that. Hated it. Oh, I'm sorry, like, Scott. They took the beauty. I, they took the beauty of, of basically what Bruce Tim did with the Batman the animated series, and everyone else, it. even even that the terrible Batman and Robin movie, kind of took pieces of that, and yeah. they took somebody and made him crazy. And I don't know why they did that. Just another crazy guy. Yeah, yeah. it was weird. And I, I at hope the they time, rebirth. I, I hope they rebirth that man. <laughs> you need to afterbirth well, that story. 
I uh, yeah, and I believe I believe they have already retconned it. I mean, okay. they've got a Mister Freeze arc in uh, Scott Snyder's All Star Batman, and I th- I like to I, I think <laughs> they like, retconned it, but I'm. <laughs> I, yeah, I think they retconned it, but I'm not sure how explicit they were uh, yeah. mentioning that. Um, but anyway, Detective Comics, super good. I love it. It's got Azrael in it. Hey. Azrael. All Valley Azrael. And yeah, I'm I want glad you to that plug, he's at the end, back. I want you to plug that. I want you to plug something special. So, uh, something special. That's yeah. not happened yet, but probably will but soon, we'll. sometime soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so I've got that. I've got Green Arrow, which I am partly buying for the Adams variant covers. Because <laughs> I love Neil Adams. Neil Adams is awesome. Um, but actually, the, the team has been pretty good. The interior art um, is really good, too. It's just kind of stable and consistent, but it's not really jumping out as like a standout book uh-huh. every couple weeks. But um, it's like I said, it's consistent. Yeah. And uh, they are their job with the Green Arrow, Black Canary relationship which they kind of just ruined in New 52, another yeah. thing. <laughs> yep. Thanks, New 52. Um, thanks, and New thanks, 52. And thanks, Arrow TV Show. Arrow TV Show botched oh, that. Oh, that's terrible, too. Oh, man. They really screwed it up. But uh, I will say that, as far as the TV shows, this season on of Arrow has been, like, the best season since season two. Like, yeah, it has been. Far. Far it has it's been, been so good. They even got Ragman in there, and that's, like, Except he's super the committed. worst. <laughs> Right, but, I just don't like who he is when he's not Ragman. He just like he 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 reminds me guy. of the guy who's playing the Flash right now on uh, in the movie. He like seems like a low oh, budget sure. Ezra Miller. <laughs> he does what he seems <laughs> like. I don't know. Well, he ain't in the show no more at the moment, anyway. So. Oh, uh, I'm reading Aquaman, which uh, again it's kind of the same as as uh, as Green Arrow. I'm just kind of reading it, and it's uh, it's good. You're just treading water with but, it. But I'm, tr- yeah, I guess to make a pun, yeah, basically it's, it's Aquaman. I, I would you say Green Arrow is a little like, off target? Would I say what <laughs> is Green Arrow a little off target? Oh yeah, <laughs> so it do- do- it doesn't quite hit the mark. Hey, <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, with the Jason Momoa Aquaman up, Aquaman, it, uh, it, he just seems rife for like a very hard reinterpretation yeah and and they've done that before in the past you know with the peter david like well the peter david guy. one seems more in line with what jason momoa is doing it does it does and so, i think that's not insignificant yeah let's i wonder if james wan is going to take that visual or if he's going to refine them a little bit because i mean you can you can go both ways post justice league he yeah. could be i need to be more regal i need to be more in line with the surface dwellers or he's just going to stay and look more armored and yeah so, or they can just change change the costume on, during on the situation, you know. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like the whole orange shirt can look more like like ceremonial, you know. Whereas his battle oh, gear is for you know I'm gonna go fight you know black man or whatever. So yeah, yeah. But uh, we like I said, I've dropped Justice League, but I still have a few issues to go. Green Lanterns, I'm enjoying. Nightwing, I am enjoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tim Seeley, I believe, is the writer on that. Um, he's yeah. he's been doing a good job, and he he uh, reintroduced Bloodhaven back into the yeah. uh, universe, which again is something New Fifty Two took away. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> thanks New Fifty Two. <laughs> yeah, that Bloodhaven was um, was you know Chuck Dixon's Nightwing run was fantastic, and, legendary. It's so yeah, good, and Bloodhaven was a character. Like you can't. I think Nightwing yes. was kind of defined. That's what he needed, and Chuck Dixon gave yeah. him a great city to to be a part of, and. You know, having him in Gotham yeah. just Gotham's crowded. You don't everyone doesn't need to be in Gotham. So yeah, putting him back in Bloodhaven makes so much sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Gives him a home base and it and like you said, I mean, if if he's not Robin, Batman has like at least one other, maybe two Robins in yeah. Gotham super crowded. You know, give give uh, Dick Grayson his own little spot and that's what they are finally doing again. Yeah. It's better for the Batman relationship with Nightwing for them to have their own deals. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> As if they're real people, but it just it always yeah. felt like it well, was it was better that way. <laughs> cool. Um I'm reading the Dark Souls comics from Titan Comics. Uh-huh. Uh right now it's a uh, Dark Souls Winter Spite is they've been doing it in these little um 3 or 4 issue um little mini series sets. And uh if you're a fan of the Dark Souls video games uh-huh. and you'll like the comics, um they're they're fun, they're good. Uh so I'm doing that. I'm reading uh, Mother Panic, 
uh, from DC's Young Animal pop up imprint. Are you, like, are you I liking that? They called it. I am enjoying Mother Panic. Cool. Uh, have you have you read? No, I'm just doing Doom Patrol, and uh, I'm I've read a few of the Cave Carson books because Matt was getting right. those, and then um, but I'm looking forward to Bug, the Jack Kirby uh, mm-hmm. one coming out from uh, oh Michael Allred and his crew. Oh, okay. So yeah. so yeah, I mean for me like that whole pop up imprint thing happened. I'm like oh, okay, that's interesting, but I'm not really going to read it. You know, if, for the listeners like DC's Young Animal is kind of a it's kind of a more, more mature comic book readers. Mature, you know, they can kind curse, of quirky, have blood. It's, yeah, it's it's really kind yeah. of just weird. It's more weird than like I don't. Yeah. I don't know why yeah. they didn't just go the Vertigo route, but I think it was kind of like, well, hey, we can bring Gerard Way in. He's a name people know him from like my yeah. romance and all that stuff. He's done. And yeah, I don't. know. I like it. Well, regardless. that way. I mean, having it be DC's young animal because they can keep it in uh, in canon with everything else yeah, that's for say, example the only that i'm reading mother panic is because it's you know set in gotham and uh, <laughs> it's and it's and it's got you know batman and batwoman or bat you know characters can pop up in there yeah. every so often so so that was the hook for me mm-hmm. and it totally worked <laughs> so uh and, and it, it helps that it's only monthly too yeah. you know um so i'm enjoying mother panic and again it's it's something different it's also tangentially related to batman so i can't really complain about that Nice. Uh, I've got some more issues of the Flash to go. Uh, I'm I, but I'm gonna drop it because I'm just not really enjoying it too much. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Matt wasn't enjoying just, it much either, but I think he jumped back on. Did he? Okay. Yeah, I mean, he, I know he wants to hear more art, about but, the Barry Allen and Wally West relationship. He was kind of intrigued by it, so he. I think and, he dropped. Well, that's that's one of the strongest parts of the book. Yeah. Too. I will say that. So cool. All right. So is that is that, uh, is that all you got in your stack? I'm looking. I've got more. Let's <laughs> see. Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Green Arrow, uh, Trinity. I've been reading Trinity. Okay, that's a, that's a good book. I've been reading. I read Matt's. That's that's. Oh yeah, that's good. I mean, again, it's monthly and it's, uh, you know, people been writing that. Uh, uh, well, Francis Manipole. Yeah. Who did the first Who's arc? Fantastic. Oh, and if he's you ever super get a chance fantastic. to meet him, he's the nicest guy, dude. Nice. Oh, is he? Oh yeah, we met him at a con, and he like okay. he was watercoloring like uh sketches for people and for free he was like yeah oh, yeah so, good. so i got a cool hawkman one he did he did for me i should try mm-hmm. i'll try and find it and put it on the instagram to show people because yeah it mm-hmm. was it was cool he just he did whatever anyone asked and he was watercoloring it was cool mm-hmm. nice guy oh, that's awesome yeah he's, he's canadian um, i think all those canadians are super nice hey, they hey are. <laughs> you know <laughs> uh i'm reading super sons me too because uh, Tomasi is a great writer, yep. and I know you've talked about it too. Like, just the way that, um, and to dovetail into the Superman books, you know, mm-hmm. action comics and Superman have been just so good. Yeah, and Tomasi is a big part of that. Um, and you know, they've used they've used those books kind of like like a like a door pilot kind of thing to reintroduce you know these uh you know kid characters like you know um. You know, like Superman stuff, and you've got Damian Wayne, and now you can have team them up in Super Sons, and yeah. it makes it makes a lot of sense, and it's and it's really well written so far. I mean, it's only two issues in, but it's it's really fun, and it and it's and it's again, it's something different. Yeah, and it's something you know what my my seven year old he reads it too now, so it's kind of oh cool. does he? Yeah, he That's he awesome. wanted, he was like, what is that, Dad? And I was like, I almost didn't want to get <laughs> it, but I was like, I like to give him stuff that he can kind of devour, and he really liked it. The only here's what mm-hmm. I like about it because I. At first, I was like against this idea of Jonathan Kent of the, the Sun, and yeah, I really like him, and I just really no, miss it's... Connor Kent. I miss the old Superboy oh, yeah. from uh, the pre fifty two because he was actually yeah. really they cool. they screwed him up in the new fifty two. Yeah, oh yeah, it just it, yeah, new 52. <laughs> they did. Yeah, new fifty two was really terrible for stuff like that. He and yeah. what's really sad about that is um, again, Jeff Johns had a really cool run with them in Adventure Comics. And it was a really cool. Yes, I read that. Yeah, it was great. By and then Francis it Manipal. Died. Yeah, yeah. It, and it was really so well done. And there was some really interesting, like concepts they didn't really get to fully explore. And you know, they. Oh man, I gotta save it because I have a whole, I have a whole like thought process on right before New Fifty Two. They had a really cool like momentum going, and they killed it. <laughs> like right after Brightest, yeah, sure. Brightest Day, they had some good yeah. ideas, and then it was like, oh, you, yeah. you, you completely like killed the momentum you had from us investing a whole year into this like 
you know, correcting all these characters like from Hawkman and Swamp yes. Thing and Dead Man, and then they and I read it. I read all of Brightest Day too. Yeah. I mean, it just I was I was there. It was I, like they took a weird did. left turn. Like you set us up for the Return yeah. of the Hawks, and it sucked. And then <sighs> Swamp Thing yeah. felt like like I even saw like pencils where it had regular Superman in it, and then they had a they didn't really. The new Fifty Two didn't really affect much of Swamp Thing because they were going to tell their story that Scott Snyder was doing, mm. but mm-hmm. the visuals they had to change because there was like I remember right. there was like a Superman visit in that first issue. Anyway, anyways, whole other episode, whole other episode. All right, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we're getting we're getting close on time. Ryan, oh. any other things that you want to you want to like tell us about that you're reading? Uh, last two books is been uh, I have but I haven't read it yet. But uh, I've been happy. But again, it dovetails out of Detective Comics and it's fun <laughs> it's, and and. Uh, I'm ex- I'm excited about reading it, and Scott Snyder's All Star Batman, yeah, um, which which has been a blast. And like I said before, like on other places, uh, I think we've talked about this on BOF. Just Scott Snyder not really having to be the guy, the the DC Universe architect in that title. You know, just he can stretch his wings and just whatever crazy story he wants in All Star Batman. I'm mm-hmm. enjoying that too. Awesome, great books. Yeah, man. I just the uh, the pigeon tail. I or the dovetail. <laughs> the pigeon tail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's it's X Men confusing guys. That's what it is. All right. I oh. am loving Superman by Tomasi. Tomasi is such a great yes. writer. Like when and I know that Jeff Johns gets a lot of the credit for Green Lantern, but Green Lantern Corps by Tomasi was excellent. So good. Yeah, it was yeah. such a good book. And then so was his take on Batman and Robin. You you would have thought, oh mm-hmm. man, like because Morrison was writing Batman and Robin. And I think after Morrison left, it was Tomasi that took over and it was really good. Like it was such a good book. Like he had a really good mm-hmm. dynamic between Bruce and Damien. That was where he turned it into his own. Yeah, he really thing. did. So he's done a good job. I really like what he does. Yeah. His Superman's mm-hmm. been like the best Superman I've read in a long time. And I don't want to forget Patrick Gleason. Cause I know Patrick Gleason contributes oh, yeah. to stories and again, his yes. pencils, he just, all those books I just mentioned, like Green Lantern Corps and Batman and Robin, Gleason's been a part of. He's just got a fun, quirky yeah. style, and definitely check those books out. Uh, I'm loving Batman as well by um, King. It's so good. I, I'm not going to mention the storyline currently going on because I want to wait. I want for yeah. it to wrap up to talk about it. But I love, yeah. I love King's Batman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and this is my show. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, and you you can like it. I will say I, these, I have read these last two issues, uh-huh. and there's there's problems. I mean, yeah. the things that I don't like are still present. Uh, now, I think there's problems. I think I agree with you, and I, mean, I would like to talk more about it. But I I'm hoping the next issue makes sense because I'm I I can see the problems, but I also too. see what they're probably doing. I'm like, is this what they're doing? So I'm I'm waiting for it to sure. to to end so they can like bookend I, it. So yeah. Yeah, real quick on it yeah. though. It is it is a Bane storyline, mm-hmm. and Tom King is it, the last couple issues have been doing some very interesting like comparison things between Batman and Bane, and some of yeah. the things are a little too overboard for me and weird and just yeah. go left field and go too much. But some of the comparisons they make are like super good and like hit like the core of the characters like in one line of dialogue that was so good that you didn't need all the other stuff that they did to lead up to it, yeah. if that makes any sense. Once yeah. you, that's why I'm hoping the next um, issue they bring it home in, in issue, is it, yeah. I think it's 19 or 20 that's coming yeah. out. Like, so, wrap it up, make it strong, because I'm kind of, oh, they got to end this one good. Because if they don't end this story well, it's going to be like, well, that was kind of, it was almost like two different stories telling yeah. one story. So my favorites mm-hmm. have been the two Catwoman one-offs, though. Those are actually really good. Mm-hmm. Those are kind of, I say I like that story. I thought it was a cool oh. little break in the middle. A lot of people do. Different, different strokes, man. Different strokes. Okay, I know, I know. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> thank you for thank you for being a guest star, not a fill in, a guest yes. star on yes. Let's Go Comic Show. Can you tell people out there how can they get a hold of you? Say they disagree uh, with you. They're like, man, your opinions are trash juice, and we want to fight with you online. Or we love you, Ryan. Tell <laughs> us more about you. Okay. Well, if you want to find me on Twitter, you can find me at smb underscore Ryan. Uh, and that that's where you can find me. Yeah, so Ryan, he is on the Batman on a Film Show. We're both on that. We're roundtablers on that show, so mm-hmm. catch that every week at uh, batman-on-film.com. Or 
you can go to batmanpodcastnetwork.com and check out a whole bunch of Batman shows because that's that's a good time right there. If you love Batman, you will love all the podcasts you can hear about right there. Also, he is on Robin. Everybody loves the Drake podcast. Sorry, I'm plugging you because you didn't plug yourself, man. Plug, you plug yourself. Well, you, you, you just ask where people can find me and yeah. then there's other stuff. There's other stuff. Yeah, and then the, t- Like you said, it's the, the Robin Everyone Loves the Drake podcast. Yeah. It's all about Tim Drake. It's super great. I joined them as a permanent guest star special <laughs> on every episode <laughs> uh earlier this year and uh they're on twitter at eltd podcast and uh, you can find them on the batman podcast network.com yeah. website and well. the last episode was really good because you did have chuck dixon on as a guest who yes if you're did. a robin fan or a nightwing fan or just you know good bang b- fan batman yeah oh yeah the creator of bane like check yeah. out that that was a great <laughs> great interview so that was that was a really good to listen so check that out and then you have something coming up sorry i'm Probably, I can even cut this out if you want me to. I was going to say, hey, do you want to no, tell us about no. what's coming out soon from Ryan Haas Productions uh, Incorporated? You know, because I, I, don't, I don't do enough podcasts yeah. with you know, Batman on film and Robin, Everyone Loves a Drake, and being guest stars on other sweet podcasts like this, I want to do another one because I need that needs to be filled. And um, I want to do, you know, whether, uh, being on the – all this, all these podcasts have kind of inspired me, and I, I want to do a podcast focusing on the Jean-Paul Valley Azrael, specifically nice. the uh, hundred issue solo series that he did. Um, so I am going to be doing a podcast uh, about that coming up sometime in the next couple months. It's going to be called the Agent Agent of the Bat Podcast, which is uh, named after what the Azrael solo solo series was called in the half of its run. Um, but it already has a Twitter. Uh, and you can find that Twitter at Azrael Podcast. I made it super simple. Hey. Um, and when there are any updates or cool things going on with that, that's where it will be updated. Awesome. Very cool. Yes. Okay, so if you have any other comments or questions for Ryan, check them out online. If you'd like to comment towards us, you can find us on all social media at Let's Go Comic Show on Twitter and Instagram. You can go to our website at Let's Go Cast.com. Find us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Let's Go Cast. Or email us if you're super old fashioned and you have bifocals at Let's Go Comic Show at gmail.com. You can hit us up. Thank you for listening. Please share and leave us five stars and a positive comment on iTunes. That helps us a lot. So for Matt, who is not here, I am Justin. I am Ryan. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) 